Hi guys, welcome back to another Dragonair Silent Gods video. In this video today, I'm going to be showcasing the final team that I've been using for the Otherworld Exploration Chaos Shadow Bosses. So this is coming to an end now on my server. We have maybe one or two days left at a push uh, before we go into the final boss of Season 2. But before I get into showing that last team to you, I do just want to start by saying a huge thank you to Dragonair Silent Gods for uh, sponsoring my channel and supporting me while I continue to push out content for you guys. If you are enjoying the look of Dragonair Silent Gods or want to support the channel, please do hit the link in the description or the pinned comment. So the team I am showcasing in this today, as I say, is the final team that I've been using on all of my dailies. And it is another team on Alton. Alton is just such an easy boss in comparison to some of the others. And there's so many options in the ice and radiance element that it just makes so much sense to build more teams into that if you've got them. So to run through this team, first of all, I will showcase Ardreth. So Ardreth is the hero from season two that you can pick up during the second month from the Lunar Halo events. So Ardreth is an incredibly strong tank, works very well with lots of other supports, especially Garius. Um, however, when it comes to Chaos Shadows, you want to split off your best heroes and split them out between teams just to get some more success. So the way I've got my Ardreth built is she is in full defense because she does heal based on her defense, as well as that she does have enough accuracy to place Witch's Remains, and she's wearing the Mona Lisa's set to heal somebody every time she uses her ultimate skill. So the reason for Witch's Remains is as much as Ardreth doesn't hit on her ultimate skill, she does enhance her battle skills and those battles, sorry, her basic skills. And those basic skills can actually hit, um, well, they, they actually count as ultimate skill hits, allowing you to place Witch's Remains through just basic attacks through Ardreth. So really strong option and allows me to build more damage into my damage dealers. The actual tank I'm using for this team is the rare from the ice element Loris. He does have his skills upgraded. So Loris is built as any tank would be with a good amount of HP and defense. And aside from that, enough accuracy to place the attack penalty to on his ultimate skill. In terms of artifacts, I'm wearing the Cyril set to grant attack up to the whole of my the rest of my team every time he uses an ultimate skill. And he is wearing the crown of the unclean artifact just to get a little bit more uptime on some defense penalty throughout the fight. I'll show my healer first. So I am using Kaleido, the Radiance Rare. So Kaleido is a really good option for some healing. However, they are a melee hero, so you will need to be up close and personal with them as they do heal in a small radius, well, a relatively decent sized radius around them. Uh, the healing is scaled on max HP and enlightenment. So you want to make sure that you've got a good amount of the enlightenment in your build. I've got mine built with a good amount of defensive stats after that. I'm wearing the Ally Protection set, so Ancestral Protection, to reduce the damage everyone else is taking by 15%. Instead, Kaleido does take that damage, but Kaleido does gain a 15% damage reduction at the same time. So lastly, the Everlasting Diamond is the artifact I'm using for the huge Enlightenment boost, also 25% increased healing. You can get this artifact by finishing the Pillar of Trials in Season 2. So next up, I will show my first damage dealer, and that is Drist Do Erden. So Drist Do Erden is last season's Dungeons and Dragons uh, collaboration hero. So I've got my Drist built with 100% crit rate, 154% uh, crit damage, and a solid amount of attack. He's not used, uh, not got any skills upgraded, so they are just kind of baseline, and he's not inspired either. I only pulled for one copy. Next up, he's wearing the Inventor set for his gear sets to get as much damage as I can. So every time he uses a battle skill or an ultimate skill, he will gain a damage bonus, stacking up to four times for 15 seconds. And in terms of his artifact, I've got him in the Wine of Dragon Blood artifact, just for the extra attack speed, because he's already boosting his attack speed from his passive with um, Guenevar. So as you can see, they do gain a stack of Planar Ally. Planar Ally is a permanent stack where a stacking boost of attack speed and attack so if with this artifact you can get your drist to go incredibly fast and hit very frequently leading to a large amount of damage next up i've got hockadir so hockadir is a frost legendary hero he is mostly here to um well he, he's just a damage dealer in my team so he's also not got any of his skills upgraded as you can see he is built with a good amount of crit rate, a good amount of crit damage, and a good amount of attack too. 
Also wearing the Inventor set, it is my favourite set when it comes to damage. And he's also wearing the Eyeball of the Giant Artifact to gain a 20% damage bonus on his ultimate skill. So, I'm going to quickly use the crit damage aura in all battles from Drist, and I'm going to jump into the run, and I will be back at the end of the run to talk about how it went. There we go, so we are coming towards the end of this run now that it's going to fail, and he's, there we go, so it's over now. Um, so as you can see, it did well over 22 million, so 29.5 million damage with this team, and that has got me the top rewards. Um, so anything over 22 million damage is completely wasted. So if we look at the damage, it's quite a nice even split, so Drist doing slightly more than Hockadir, but Hockadir did die before Drist. As for the healing, it's a pretty decent job by Kaleido, the rare healer. Um, obviously, Ardreth is incredibly strong and has her skills upgraded, so the amount of healing she's putting out is not a surprise, really. Maurice did his job with attack penalty, keeping that up for a good amount of the fight, but really this damage all comes from the Hockadir and Drist duo. I haven't built either of them with accuracy, which is actually a mistake. I probably should have built at least one of them with accuracy to get the frost debuffs out. I would have amplified both of their damages, but it's done the job and it's uh, what I've been using since the start of this event. So that is all for this team and all for my Chaos Shadow teams. That is now all of them shown, as you can see here, just claiming the top rewards again. So in terms of the events, obviously this is coming towards an end now. So as you can see, we've got two days and 20 hours until the final boss spawns. However, these, if they hit 100% beforehand, we will get the boss on the following reset. So it is very possible that we will get that in probably, I, I reckon we'll get it in two more resets. Uh, we'll be on the boss, so a little bit earlier than anticipated. Um, so I'm really excited to give that a try. We don't know anything about the final boss of the season yet, other than it's a big robot thing so yeah that is all for this video guys i do just want to say once again a huge thank you to the sponsor of the video dragon air silent gods if you are interested in getting involved do not forget to click that link in the description or the pinned comment and i'll see you in the next video